We are here with our favorite Shih Tzu's Finn and Fiona. They are going to get short, but not too short salon cuts. All right, guys, let's get busy. I'm going to begin Finn's groom using a four blade on the trunk of his body. Going from about two fingers past the back of his skull, all the way down to the tail. following the lay of the coat. One thing I've learned with Shih Tzu's especially is the lay of the coat does not go around the rib cage, but more comes back at an angle. And if you curve down around the rib cage like you do with most dogs, you may end up with some lines here. I also find the same thing to be true with Westies, West Highland White Terriers. So we're angling back. Towards the flank. And if you pay attention to the lay of the coat here, instead of coming down over the shoulder, I'm coming more at an angle. The less lines that you can prevent when you're going over the dog with the clipper, the less you have to go back and correct later and blend out. I like to do pre-back clipping for a couple of reasons. Number one, I like going over the coat with the clipper prior to the bath so I can see exactly where the hair is lying naturally. And I do not brush it up first. I clip it right where it is because this is where it will end up. And if you clipper the dog after the bath, the lay of the coat may be in an altered state. It may be different than it was before the bath and before the brush out. But I also clip it after the bath. So I get it in both positions. I get the coat when it's light and lifted up and fluffy and brushed as well as when it is laying down where it naturally goes. So I'm coming down over the point of shoulder here. This is a fairly short, easy maintenance haircut. It's short, but not too short. I'm coming up under the ear, halfway between the eye and the ear. I'm bringing my clipper straight down. Halfway between the eye and the ear, coming straight down. I am not trying to get it super even. I am just bulking off hair. Lifting up the ear, coming down over the shoulder from directly behind the ear. Rounding down under the chest. And from the little Adam's apple area here to the point of the breast here, I'm gonna come up against the grain. Good boy. I am coming down from the point of rump down towards the hock just to cut in a little bit of angulation there and then I'm taking this area where the hair grows against the normal direction, it's growing in the opposite direction. I'm going straight down over that which is in effect clipping against the grain right here. 
this dog has allergies and many times when I clipper the hair off of the feet, it ends up looking red and swollen. That's pre-existing when I do find that on him. Um, so the clipping just exposes it, but it still needs to be clipped. I am using a 30 blade on the pads of his feet. I will repeat this on all four feet. I am using a tin blade around the eyes, taking my hand in a C shape over the head, stretching the skin back, and coming in and scooping in the folds and rolls that he has on his face. as you go to get in those folds. There we go. There it goes. You ready for a bath? Huh? Is you ready for a bath? Yeah. Yeah, he's ready for a bath. Yeah. All right, let's go. I'm going to give him a nice shampoo and conditioning treatment. When shampooing the face, I put the shampoo in the palm of my hand, rub it between my hands, put one hand under the dog's chin, one hand on top of the dog's head, and then start working the shampoo down towards the face and eyes. That way the thickness of the shampoo is here and here. I prefer to use my products undiluted and I only use products that are best used undiluted so that I can have the thickness and the control to work around the face especially. As I get to around the eyes, we have these deep folds, one in front of the eye and one up over the nose with a ridge of skin here. So to get to that, putting a little extra shampoo on my finger, rubbing it. Now I'm gonna pull the muzzle down and get this finger up into that fold and then up into the other fold. So we got two deep creased folds. It's very important to keep these folds clean and dry because if you don't, Bacteria and fungus can settle in there and become itchy and stinky very quickly. Now we're gonna put a little bit of shampoo on the other side. Get it right up in the folds. Sliding my finger up without getting anything in the eyes. That is my goal. Then we can take this thickness of shampoo we just put in those folds and start working it around the mouth. We can take some on our thumb and go straight up between the eyes. 
down over in the nose. And because these dogs do have allergies that have been diagnosed by their vets, you can see the thickness and redness in these areas. It takes a lot of maintenance with dogs like this. And the pet owners with these dogs do a fabulous job. Time to rinse. I put the water up over the top of the skull, you'll notice that it was gently running down over the folds so that it was bypassing the nose and gently falling off to the sides. Working the conditioner in getting it heavy on the ears and the tail, the areas where it's longer, making sure to work it over the trunk of the body with the lay of the coat. Conditioner is a very important step that should not be overlooked. It returns to the skin what we remove during the washing and the dogs are far less itchy and their coat and skin stays in much better shape when we use conditioner. Now using a good quality ear cleansing solution, I am going to fill up each ear canal with the ear cleanser. Rub the base of the ears to work it all in and allow the dog to shake his head. Now we'll wrap him up in a nice warm towel and head off to the drying table. I use cosmetic pads to wipe out the ears. I typically break them in half. Use half on one side and half on the other. Never transfer anything from one ear to the other. Keep the, whatever you use in the ears completely separate. On the trunk of the body where the hair is shorter, I'm going to use a brush with the little plastic tips over the pins. That'll be a lot more comfortable. drying the face with a comb that has a triple row of teeth. This is very safe to use around the eyes and the dogs like it a lot better.
for dogs who like to throw their head back, I use my shoulder or my chin against the back side of their head and allow them to brace their head up into me. I feel that this not only comforts the dog, but the using the body blocking actions actually help me to do my job more efficiently. Time to trim the nails. You're all right, buddy. Good boys. Good boys. Good boy. His face is done a little bit differently than hers. He's got a completely different shape to his face. And his hair grows nicely down off the front of the muzzle instead of straight out like hers. So what I'm going to do with him is pull the hair up between my fingers and snip a little off. Allow it to fall down into place. And trim his bangs. Trim the hair off over his eyelashes. I'm going to use my 40 blade on his lips. And over the top of his nose. Good boy. Very, 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 very good. Yes, it was. Tilt his head back. Make sure it's even from underneath. Lift his ear up, get all the hair off the front of the ear. Scissor out any excess hair from inside the ear. Good boy. I do not pluck ears in my salon. If you would like to know why, read this blog here that is linked. And be sure to read the articles that are linked as sources in that blog as well for more information.
just rounding the face, blending the bangs down into the sides, blending the back of the head into the shorter hair on the back. Scissoring off anything that's sticking up. For most of this work, I'm using seven inch straight shears. Now using curved chunkers, we're gonna round up this face. I like using chunkers on Shih Tzus. They work nicely. If you notice, I have my fingers in this position, just sliding under the jaw and behind the ear to help brace the head. You'll notice a lot of times when you see me work, I am not holding on to the chin hair. I just use my fingers to help brace the dog. You know, every now and then you might see my hand slide up there to get the head back into position, but holding the chin hair to do the work, I think is rude to the dog. I know a lot of people say, well, that's just the way it's done and that's how you keep control of their head. And I get it, I understand, that's how I was trained too. When I started using more fear-free techniques and I started looking at what was making dogs more resistant to grooming, I started reevaluating the things that I do, how I hold the dogs, where I put my hands, and just being more considerate. And I think it pays off in dividends when the animal is more cooperative because they're more comfortable. Right? Right? Good boys, right? From the back side of the dog, you want to comb out the legs and make sure that the legs are dropping straight down without looking bowed out, without too much hair in between. You want it to look nice and straight. Now from a distance, you might think that this looks choppy here, but what you're seeing is brown spots in the hair that give that optical illusion. You can see the spots better from this side.
taking my curved blending shears, I'm gonna round out this mustache a bit. I think it makes a dog look much younger if they don't have a droopy mustache. So I blend it upward. This also keeps the dog much cleaner when they eat and drink. Blending the ends of the ears so they look nice and natural. That's looking nice. All right, Fiona. Fiona, where's Fiona? Where's Fiona? Hi, Fiona. Hi, Fiona. Hello. How are you? Huh? You make a treaty? Huh? Do you make a treaty? Oh, you are. Oh, you are. Oh, I see he's trying to keep pretty. Oh, I see he's trying to keep pretty. Yes. Yeah, he's ready to keep pretty. Yeah. four blade I'm going to clip her with the grain from two fingers past the back of the skull all the way to the tail following the growth of coat down the sides underneath and keeping the legs fuller The lay of this dog's coat coming down the sides goes almost straight back. If I round down into it, I will end up with lines that I cannot get out easily. going down over the big thigh muscle, dropping off of the pointer rump. I am doing her a little bit different on the rear than I did her brother because he has big, thick 
muscles on his legs. She's built a little bit differently. So you'll notice on him, I dropped down the back of the leg with the clipper. On her, if I did that, her back legs would look too skinny. So it depends greatly on the conformation of the dog, what you do with them. The conformation of her face is quite a bit different from his. So while they're getting the exact same haircut, the trending style will be slightly different. Her hair grows straight off the front of her muzzle, as you can see. But if you cut it too short, it looks really funny. So getting her face right is tricky. And you can see a month later, it looks quite quite disheveled. Doesn't it? Yes, it does. So up under here from about the breastbone to the Adam's apple, I'm gonna come against the grain. Be sure to check out my Shih Tzu playlist. We have many different styles ranging all the way from Asian fusion to full coat and many trims in between. Using a tin blade, I am going to trim around her eyes, stretching the skin back with my hand in a C shape, like a C clamp, bracing my thumb under her jaw, my fingers spread out over her head and then stretching the skin back. It's important to stretch the skin back because that opens up the folds of skin under her eyes. It's time to give Fiona a bath. Wiping the ears out with cotton pads. Just like on the other dock, we'll use the same routines.
Using my 4F blade, we will go back over the clipper work in the same manner that we did before the bath. Coming down over the shoulders and skimming off. Around the rib cage. Down the big thigh muscle, skimming off. All the way down to the tail. Lift up the ear, get the little bit of hair behind the ear. Come down over the point of shoulder and skim off. Good girl. Do the same on the other side. Coming in just a bit here under the point of shoulder to set her leg up under her. Skimming off the leg. Good girl. Now we're going to brush the hair on the trunk of the body and go back over all the clipper work one more time. Halfway between her eye and her ear, I'm going to come down with the clipper to bulk off some of that hair.
with my tin blade, I'm going to go back over the area around her eyes and clipper it again. Stretching the skin back, pulling the folds up so I can get down in there. I'm taking my clipper straight down into that fold and picking it out. Do the same on this side. Stretch the eye back. Bring my clipper straight down into that fold. And pick it out. 40 blade and see if she'll let me clean off her lips. Putting my fingers on both sides, stretching the lips back. I'm gonna bring the corner of the 40 blade up into the area just under the nose. Good girl. Using a slicker brush, I'm going to brush the hair down around the feet, then using a small curved shear, I'm going to scissor off anything that falls below the pads of the feet. Now we're scissoring around the feet. Getting them nice and tight and round. Be sure to check out our accompanying blog. It has links to all of the tools that I'm using, as well as some fun facts about Shih Tzu's. I am scissoring up her legs like nice little pillars. Dropping straight from the chest all the way down to the toes without any dipping in. You'll notice I do not pick up the legs to scissor them when I am working, especially on the front of the leg. If I picked up the foot to work on it, like so, and I went to cut, I would be cutting like this, right? How you get these straight pillar legs is keeping the foot on the table as you're scissoring it. Picking up the leg to work on it oftentimes will cause a dip in front of the leg and then cause a snowshoe type effect. Combing the hair up and scissoring down, dropping from the chest to the toes. Dropping off the big muscles, scissoring downwards. That helps me to shape the leg in a pillar.
lifting up this leg to get to the other leg. Good girl. Using a conditioning spray, an anti-static spray while scissoring, gives you more control over the hair, as well as reducing static. It keeps the hair right where you put it and helps the scissor to grab the hair. When the hair is too light and fluffy from the blow dry, sometimes it just kind of pushes away from the scissor. And when using the scissoring spray, it alleviates that problem. tail up over her back. I'm going to check and see if anything's poking up or falling over the back end. Taking my curved shears, just going to round this up and trim off any of that excess. That keeps the tail nice and clean and sitting high up on the back. Because her hair growth patterns come straight out off the front of the face, straight out on the cheeks, parts down the middle, and when you trim it too short, it looks really bad. When you leave it too long, it looks really bad. If she were in full coat, it would be a non-issue, but because we are trimming her, it becomes an issue. So I'm going to start on her face with chunkers, small curved chunkers, and I'm gonna start rounding everything up. I'm just shooting for round in the shape. Coming back over the eyes. I'm going to shoot for round from this direction as well. Trying to create a circle. Not cutting into the mustache too much from the front.
blending the back of the head into the shorter body using my blending shears. to come in and smooth out what I trimmed with the chunkers. And using my scissors, I want to get up over her eyelashes and trim that away a little bit. Scissoring up over her nose, getting into that front side of that roll. Comb everything down from underneath, get it nice and tight up under here. and tight in front of the ears. Pulling the ear forward, we want to blend back into the shorter hair. Girl, you're looking so pretty. Yes, you are. Look at the pretty girl. Look at the pretty girl. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye.